So in this video lecture, I'm going to show you how to set up a logging facility for IP tables. We're going to use the service R syslog for our uh, logging facility and our configuration file. I have two virtual machines set up, Ubuntu 15 as you see here, which will be our server. And then I have over here the virtual machine that we'll use to connect to the server. I want to make sure. And so the configuration file for our syslog will be in the following directory. And go to Etsy R syslog D. And we have a couple of files in there. The UFW is for the uncomplicated firewall, which is another interface just like IP tables to NetFilter, which is uh, the firewall kernel. And so let's look at right here is if you look at this line right here, that line will should be there by default. As something that you'll be adding that kern.warning and then we'll point that to verlog iptables.log which shouldn't exist unless you've already created it so go ahead and do that and then we want to save that and then get out and then I've already created the iptables.log uh, file and I'll show you what that looks like, iptables.log. And so it's already got some information in it because I've been running this to make sure that this works. And notice that the owner is syslog and the group is ADM. And notice the permissions right here. It's read write for syslog and read for ADM. Okay. And you should know how to change those permissions and change the ownerships for that file. If you just create it with touch, it's sudo touch and then the name of that file, it's going to be owned by root, user, and group. And the permission is going to be a little different. So let's go back and we'll take a look at the firewall. Right here. So I've set up my variables, the server is dot three, mint is dot four. Default policy, input policy is drop. And there's our stateful packet inspection. And <clears throat> the only rule I have in here is going to be for mint, just to make it easier. Excuse me, for telnet. And so the first rule says here's we're going to add to the input chain the protocol TCP source is MIT destination is server to port 23 which is telnet we want to log that and we want to log prefix just just say IP tables or you could put anything in there that you wanted in fact here it might be better just to say telnet it would be easier to see and next thing we need to do we just need to do the same rule but also drop that packet only from packets coming from Mint to the server. And then at the bottom, let's make sure that I got all this, okay. We're adding a new input chain called logging. We're gonna add that to input. We're gonna add to the input chain the target of logging. And we can also do it the output, but it's probably really not necessary in this, in this instance. And um, again, and this is maybe a little duplicative of what we saw up above. But the log level is four, which is warning, and the log prefix is IP tables, and then we're just adding that logging um, input chain, excuse me, logging chain that we created up here, is we're going to add the target drop. Okay, so we look and see if we've got our here's our firewall rules. We set up and ran. Let's see here, log and drop for Telnet. In the logging chain down here, see, so you no, know that's correct. 
And now we can come over here. So just to make sure, I can't remember if we made any changes to the uh, to the RSYS log. So I'm going to restart that so it rereads the configuration file. And I'm going to flush the rules. And you probably shouldn't have to do that. And then I'm going to restart. Notice that I'm running that as sudo because we're running with, um, you run that as root. And we can come over here and then try to telnet into 192.168.2.3. And before I do that, I'm going to hop back over here. I'm going to run tail f on bear log IP tables log because it should be now capturing um, kernel level messages. And notice that all of these are from IP tables. And the reason there's so many is because um, the default policy was drop. And I didn't have any other rules in there allowing anything else. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of that. So let's go over here and run telnet. And there's destination port 23. And if we'd set this up correctly, that we could have said that that was uh, your destination point 23. Excuse me, destination port 23. Okay, so we'll stop that. So if you go over here, notice that it can't get in. Previously, we were able to log in, and now we can't log in. So let's go into uh, again, bear log IP table. And so we can search for destination port equals 23. And there we see destination port 23. Oops. So our firewall log is working. If we, if we wanted to, come on. And so if we wanted to extract that uh, DPT equals 23, just those lines from bear log IP tables, and then we'll output that to a file here called uh, telnet.log. Let's do that. And then we can go in and look at telnet. Where are we? Oh, we're in downloads. Uh, we can look at telnet log. And you see destination port equals 23. So our firewall rule was working. So it's fairly easy to set up logging. One would think, actually, I had to work with it for for a bit to get everything working because there's several ways of doing that. But at least this shows you one way that you can set up your firewall logging so that it works. And then, of course, you're going to add in your other uh, FTP rules or SSH rules or whatever else rules where I ask you to drop those um, packets and make sure you log those. And so if you want to... Uh, when you do this, you can you can use this right here, and so you can submit, or actually, I'd like to only a single log file. And so what you can do is, if you've got a, uh, you can, if you've got, let's say, a telnet log and uh, web log and SSH log, I can't remember everything that I asked you to, to drop log, you can cat those and output that to a single file called, you know, your first name, last name, I shouldn't say that, first name, last log, and that will cat all those logs into that single file, and you can turn that in.